Good afternoon and welcome to Salon Talks. I'm Ali Joseph and today I'm joined by Mark Paul Gosselar, I wanted to make sure I said that right, who many of you know and swooned over as Zach Morris during his early career uh, on Saved by the Bell or maybe NYPD Blue, Raising the Bar or more recently Pitch and many other shows and films. So he is here today to talk to us about his new show on Peacock, Found. Want to tell us a little bit about what Found is about? And welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good to be here. Uh, Found is a procedural show um, about finding lost people. Um, it's played, uh, the main character is played by Shanola Hampton. She plays the character Gabby Mosley. And Gabby was abducted uh, when she was 16. And uh, no one was looking for her. And um, she escaped on her own about a year after captivity. And through her life, she made a life mission to help people that were in her situation, people that didn't have the funds or the means to be found. She was gonna advocate for them through PR, which is her specialty, through uh, people that were investigators and people that could actually put the time and energy into people that, again, don't have the means uh, to get the push uh, to, to be found, which is, sadly what you need uh, in this current environment. Um, so I play her backstory. I play the guy that did abduct her. And the twist to it is, is that uh, after she escaped, um, years later, she kidnaps me. Wait, that's, isn't that, is that not, I know that the series has been airing, but yeah. was that not a spoiler? Did I, I just spoil it for you? Well, not me, I watched it. It's but, okay, people uh, can, sorry. if, 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 if if I spoiled it for them, just go back. We can watch it on Peacock Pretend. right now. No, but you can go back on Peacock. It's, it's okay. You'll still be surprised by it. it. It is that good. I think it's that well of a, a you know fleshed out show that it, it, it still holds. If, if I just spoiled it for you, just go back on. You watch it on Peacock. And then, uh, you know. That's good. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad. Okay, so everything's on the table You're now. You're okay. It's okay. But I it's out on the table now. Just Back up a little, and yeah. thank you for being here. I know you've had a very long day. You did the red That's eye okay. in. We're, we're human we're here, here at Salon, and you know. Uh, a lot of work went into looking like this just so that I could be here today. Because I do, I wouldn't look like this normally. He's maintaining I, 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 though, right? I, 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 Everybody yeah. who's who's watched you know, watched you for so these many years. So you started out um, obviously doing a comedic show, uh, you know, for kids and and older kids and and teens, and then in, in your the work that you've transitioned into is often a little bit more serious. Um, do you think- Not by choice, because my last show that I did was for ABC, which was Mixed-ish, mm -hmm. which was straight straight comedy. It was from the creators of Blackish. Um, it's never by choice of like, oh, I need to do comedic, I need to do dramatic. It just so happens that, you know, things that come to me um, that I consider, uh, it usually falls into, is it gonna challenge me? Is it something I haven't played before? Do I see myself doing this for, many years, I think every time I go onto a show, I want it to run for a minimum of five years, seven years. Well, you had a, you know, Say by the Bell ran from what, 89 to 92? Four years, and the original show. Yeah, and then there were some spin-offs. We but did the original, which was Miss Bliss, which was only a year, then Say by the Bell, which was four, and then the college years, which was one season. It feels like we did a lot of episodes. We only did 100 in those four or five years but it's been syndicated for so long that people think we did more than we actually did. What's and we that? were canceled every year. Yeah. That's the funny thing about Say by the Bell is that we never had a normal 22 episode season. It was like, we would do 10 and then we would wrap and we'd have our wrap parties and say goodbye to each other and that was the last time we'd see each other. We'd get called back by Brandon Tartikoff because Brandon Tartikoff loved, loved the series so much, his daughters actually love the series. And we go back to filming maybe 13 this time. Then we'd have another rap party. And they would say, well, maybe we'll do beach episodes. And we'd do the beach episodes. And then we'd have like spinoffs, not spinoffs, but like a movie of the weeks. And this happened for, you know, four years. But because of syndication, which started in 96, it's just been running for all these years. And, and it just finds a new generation of, of, of viewers. So that's good for you. <laughs> Not really, because it was a Saturday morning show. Oh, yes. So you would right. think that, you know, uh, I was able to buy these nice clothes with the residual money that uh, <laughs> we did on the show. That is not true. 
Um, it was a Saturday morning show. We, we probably had one of the worst deals um, in history. You live and you learn. I did read about that. And in fact, I, I read that uh, your you know, esteemed producer who you know, cast you and wanted your character to be this sort of you know, mischievous guy who uh, pranked people and, you know, but was still all the, you know, was still lovable and was still, you know, you wanted to like him, um, that you couldn't get some of the actors back because of these breaks in filming because they had committed to other things. So that's kind of an unusual trajectory. Yeah. Back in my day, and, uh, you know, we say this, it's our it just day. feels, oh boy, boy it really <laughs> dates us. But back in the day, yeah. um, you kind of stayed in your lane. Mm -hmm. If you were a TV actor, you didn't branch off and do film. You were a TV actor. Nowadays, that line has been blurred and it's so good for the actors. It's so good for people who are creative to be able to do film, television, theater, uh, music, commercials. I mean, you were frowned upon if you did a commercial back in the day. Like, why would you do a commercial? You're actually on TV. You're taking a step down. And now that you're just able to do whatever you want. Um, but because I was a television actor, I wasn't being considered for films. So I just kind of waited between, like, after a season would end, i just go back to my normal school. I, I went to a normal public school, and I would just hang out with my normal friends and waited to get another call. And then it wasn't until I was about 19 that... We finished the high school years, and we I got an offer for the primetime college years, and that was in primetime, and uh, that was real money. That was primetime money, and that's where I sort of made a decision like, oh, this is my career, I think. This is where I think I'm going to find myself, and that was in 93, 94, and then from there, I decided to become an actor full-time and uh, give up my hopes and dreams of becoming a football player or Join. That was the dream? Well, I, I, yeah. I mean, actually, right before Say by the Bell, the reason why my hair was short and blonde was because I was going to a Marine Military Academy. I wanted to go to this Marine Military Academy. I thought I was going to become a Marine, uh, an officer, and, and uh, uh, I was going to a camp in Harlingen, Texas, and I came back. My head was shaved. My hair was starting to grow out. My mom put in blonde highlights. And then and auditioned for Zach, Zach, and they said, we love that look. And then I had to dye my hair for, uh, you know, the five, six years that we were doing Saved by the Bell. And then again, in the later, I don't know, it, I haven't seen all the spinoffs. Uh, yeah, my still hair was, my, I was still dying it. I was, <laughs> di well, I was dying it, you know, to, to stay in character. What, what about if you do another one now? I wore a wig for the reboot. <laughs> You're like, I'm not doing that again. No, there was no way I was going to die. Now I know too much about I'm tr I'm hair hold, care. I'm, yeah, I'm trying to hold on to as it. much hair as I have. <laughs> no, not right. Yeah. Um, so let's let's get back to Found for a minute. You're here to talk about that. I watched a number of episodes, and I do think it's really important to note that um, the of the 600,000 missing persons per year, 300,000, I read, are people of color. And that seems to have been the, the true impetus for this show. Um, can you talk about what that means to you and, and why this series is important? Well, the obvious, right? I mean, to get the word out there, it's a, that, 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 that's a staggering number that I, I don't think the masses are aware of. Um, yeah, we, we, we all see it in media. I mean, you, you sort of see the media picks and chooses who should be found. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's not... Um, a system that that works, uh, in, in in our opinion, and so this is a, this is a show that yeah it gets, it gets the word out there, and makes awareness, it doesn't hit you over the head. We're not trying to to clobber you over the head with each show, We're just trying to make you aware. And and if we can get that word out, then you know we've 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 made an impact. Um, and then you have the, my side of the the show, which is the backstory and and uh, the kind of twist of it all which was for me when i received the script or found that was the first thing i read of course you're going to read the part that you're being offered and so i read that and i thought this is this is interesting for a network show where does this all lead to and then i read the rest of the script and was pleasantly surprised how the procedural was weaved into this very complex backstory um, and thought it was an interesting twist for a 
procedural um, on a network uh, that hasn't been done before. So I was very interested in that. Yeah, I, I, I want to hear a little bit about Sir. That's your character. Yeah, and we find out why Sir is called Sir in uh, upcoming episode. It's pretty interesting. So it is clear about Sir and Gabby uh, that they have a very unusual relationship. Um, it's disturbing. It's unusual, at least on the outside, and perhaps we'll learn more even more down the road. But what made you want to portray a guy like this who, you know, is a kidnapper and yeah. is kind of a creepy and some would say depraved? On the on the surface, there's nothing redeemable about this character. Um, there's nothing that I that I, yeah. I mean, I, I I could have played it in a in a way where it was very one sided because. In my eyes, uh, an individual like Sir is pretty black and white, uh, in, in my opinion. Um, but that's a challenge, right? So that's a challenge for me as an actor is like, how, how can I portray this character and possibly make the viewer question their alliances mm -hmm. and, and how they feel about this relationship that he has with Gabby. I think it's worked. I mean, it's an experiment that we're going through, but from some of the social um, interactions um, that Shinola, my, my co-star has told me, um, there's a lot of people that are, are questioning this relationship and wanting to see them together in a weird way, which Ooh. says a lot about oh. the individuals and, yeah. and um, you know, and I think people are struggling with, they like to see them together, but they know it's wrong. And it just, it opens up a whole Pandora's box, which that's to me as an actor and as a storyteller, that's kind of what you want when you're, when you're doing a project, you, you don't, you, I, I like things that live in the gray, um, on film. So I, I'm, I'm all for what, what, what people are experiencing on the show. It's it's an, it is an interesting dynamic. I was feeling a little like mutual Stockholm syndrome. Yep. Was that fair to say? Sure. It's like one's yeah. the captor, one, and then the roles but, reverse but who, as you but share. But again, again, like Shanola and I have talked about this. The our scenes in the present, not not in the in the past. In the past, it was very one sided. Mm -hmm. Sir was in control of that relationship, and he dictated what happened in in that um, space. The space that we're operating in now, where Gabby is using Sir to help solve some of her cases, um, has created this power dynamic where who's in control? Mm -hmm. Does he want to be there or is she keeping him there? And so there's this constant struggle of who is in power. Um, and that's fun to watch and it's fun for us to play while we're filming. Because we actually don't know. When you read the scripts, you, 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 you're interpreting what the writers give you but it's not always so clear. And it isn't until we're actually filming it and we're, we're playing off of each other that you start finding these little nuances and hopefully that comes across on screen. Is this, you said you, you, you hope always for a five season show. Yeah. And that is, is not often. Because financially, I just want to retire. You're done. I feel like I feel like there's a, there's a very um, finite, um, timeline for for television careers i would love to have a long career but i'm also looking for the time where you know i don't have to work so hard and i can kind of just go i'm gonna i'm gonna take a few years off watch my kids grow and uh, spend all this time with my lovely wife and and just travel um i think i'd be fine with that You'd be um, good. You, you I think you know? I would because I've been in it for so long. If you look at my career, I've, I've been in, in it for a while, but I really haven't had the shows that have had those legs. When I came on NYPD Blue, I got four years out of it. They did 12, but I came on the tail end when everything was starting to get cut. They were trying to extend the show, so they cut the licensing fees and all these things. So it wasn't, I didn't get in there when it was, you know, real meaty hmm. and good. So I'm looking for that, that still that show that has the legs, and I think found my my kid. So when they give you the, the scripts um, yeah. at the head of the season, you've got you read the whole season. No, no, they and just, that's, the other that's thing. why you don't know what's that's happening. The other right? thing that's too. That, it's, it's being that's revealed. a leap of faith. And I was thinking about this the other day: is 
it's really tough what we do on television as an actor because we don't, I don't know what the season's gonna look like. Uh, NK, the, our showrunner, Nakechi Carroll, she kind of gave me a brief synopsis of where she was going to take, but not the details really of what was gonna happen week to week to week. You get these scripts and I'm just as shocked as I guess an audience member would be when they see it but we read these scripts and it's sometimes we're we're just floored by what's going to happen in that episode and it you, you know you wish you had that that uh information to kind of shape what you did in the previous episode and you just don't and sometimes you wish you can go back in time because now you have this ammunition that you could have used um and it, it's it's a difficult process for television but uh, I think you know we do the best we can, but um, that is it is a tough um, thing to do to to have this arc through the season that you have no idea where it's going to go. Well, I hope you get five. I mean, you know, and that, that, that they've written it in such a way that it, it I would love you to. know it's not all going to be solved because they, there is a you know this relationship where I want <laughs> seven. How about seven? seven or eight? Lucky Let's just seven. keep going. Let's just do the SVU thing where they just like have twenty or so like. Wait, Marishka, but then you and then Chris get, Maloney comes back. Then your back. retirement will be so prolonged. It's okay though. I'm down. You'll for be it. cool for that. I'm down for it. I'm your down kids for will be like, you'll be like a grandpa, like, and you're like, uh, like, oh well, I'll when I like, get there. Listen, kids, what island do you want? I just bought that one. I mean, <laughs> do you want that island? It's okay. We'll just buy that. All right. So speaking of kids, and we have to wrap up. <laughs> you're a dad of four. I'm a dad of four. Bless you. Yeah. So oh. I, I got to buy islands for all my kids. That's that's the plan. Can you adopt? Who me? doesn't want an island? <laughs> I want an island. Right. All right. So, so with your kids, any tips? You said a little bit earlier before we started rolling that like every day is sort of like a log roll. That's what I call it, right? And and you don't know. You just lay in bed and think about the things All that all the things you, you did wrong. Oh, I thought you were going to encourage me because you have four and I have two. All, and I all I can say that there is no right or wrong. We're all doing our best, and that's why the thing is like, I, I I'm not on social. And, but I do read and you know, you, you hear about celebrities because they put it out there. They put it out there with their kids and stuff and they're, they're the faces and you know, mm -hmm. and they tell these stories and they, they, they're proud of their, their families or whatever. And people skewer them for things that they do. And I just feel like, you know, you're, you're not in their shoes and there's no, there's no handbook for raising kids. Give everybody the benefit of the doubt. We're all trying to do our best. We're all trying to be good people. And, um, you know, raising a child is one of the hardest things. I mean, my wife, what my wife does when I have to go to Atlanta and work for six months out of the year and I'm away, what my wife does, I couldn't do. Um, and I have so much respect for people who that's what they do is, you know, raising their children, fathers that have to work and come back. It's, it's all not easy. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's a blessing to have children. But you also know it's one of the hardest things in life you have ever been given the opportunity Mark Paul, to Mark Paul, I might not make it. I'm just saying here. Keep that rifle dry. That's all you're doing is keeping it above oh, water. See, you're just you brought literally, it back to your military roots. I like it. Look at that. Look what that, he did there. The, just keep it dry. The gunpowder has to stay dry and you're, you're good to go. All right. I have to you're think about that. You're not alone either, right? Because we're all going through this. Yeah, I know. Well, I'll alone. think of that next time. And it never ends. It, it doesn't. It never ends. I mean, Dad, There's, can I... My, my, my island is flooding. Yeah. Can you Can come? you come over here and fix it? I just bought you an island. Where Bring the bilge pump. Oh my gosh. And you know what? As a parent, you'll do it. Because that's yeah. what we do. All right. Isn't it great? Well, see, so It's after, so great being a parent. It is great. It's great. Do it right now. Run out after this interview. Get started. And, and get started, yeah. You know, and that's the thing too, right? Because it's like, I had children in my 30s and I had so much more energy in my 20s, but I was nowhere near, I had no capacity to be, but I probably would have been a much more fun dad in my 20s yeah. than I am in even my 40s and stuff like that. But it's, it, there's, I mean, it's like, you know, what are you gonna do? I don't you know. just do I the best you can. Too, You're a great parent, that's all that matters. That's good, you too. And just think about it, just, just, and here's, I'll leave you with this. Even the worst parents, their kids still love them. Doesn't matter. If you're lucky. The, the kids pretty much still love their parents no matter what. That's amazing. Right? Well, here's hoping. Just don't be a bad parent though. Yeah. Don't, don't use that as an excuse, but I'm just Screw saying, <laughs> you can sit in bed at late at night and go, I really screwed up that day. Your kids still love you though.
Yeah. Yeah. That's good. They're I needed good that. All right. Well, thank you so much. You can't screw up that bad. <laughs> okay. You yeah. can screw up, but not, the, you know. I won't. I won't. You know, we're all just doing our best. All right. So you're going to go take a nap, I hope. Yes. I'm or gonna go something. I'm going to have, yeah, I'm going to have a quick power Get on the Peloton. Oh, yeah. pe I, I would do the Peloton thing, but no. I am going to pay for that. He's going to go, he needs a nap. He did the red eye. All right. So this, of course, is Mark Paul Gosselaar, and he is here to talk about Found, his new show on Peacock, which is airing now. How many more episodes are there? I think there's about five or so. And you can watch it on demand. On Peacock, and it's on NBC, 10 o'clock on Tuesdays, 9 central. So we're out there. All right. Check it out. It's a great show. Uh, fictionally, but but actually exploring a really important real issue. Yep. And uh, we hope you'll come back when, you know, for your next season. Thank you. And thank you, Salon. Best tasting water I've ever had. Today. It is. Cheers. Cheers. Salute. <laughs>